From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, Peter. Hi, Roger. How are you doing? Okay. You? I'm fine, and I hope everybody is fine out there listening to our Ropecast. Roger, what what are we going to talk about today? Uh, I don't know if you remember. I was going to tell you this little story about a colleague of mine, an Uh American colleague. Yeah. Who uh, told us all when he arrived in Germany that as a student, he toured the U.S. on a Beamer. Uh Uh-huh. Were there any Germans present when he said that? What do you think they thought? Well, that's why I asked. I think they were confused and maybe uh, (laughs) maybe said something like... uh, a beamer doesn't even have wheels, yes. <laughs> and uh, and were they invented back then when he did that? Uh, yeah, you see, for an American, I think um, beamer can only yeah. mean BMW. Car or the motorcycle? Well, probably the motorcycle in the first place. Uh-huh. But in, in Britain, I've heard people say beamer and mean a BMW car as well. Uh-huh. So, so what would a beamer then be? What Germans call a beamer, I would just call a projector. Or maybe data projector. Data projector. If you want to make it really clear. Well, or it can be a video projector as that well. That too, yes, it? that's right. You yeah. know, especially nowadays in, exactly. in private life. Yes. Uh huh. And of course, it's a, a beamer is spelled B E E M E R. That's right. And, and whereas beamer coming from beam, German Strahl, B E A. So you've never seen this word. That's right. I think it's interesting that Germans are convinced they're using an English word here, and strictly speaking, it just doesn't exist in English. Right, so, so it's invented, not borrowed. Exactly. It's, it's basically invented, but yeah. well, invented out of an English word, though. And you know Beam. another one, which uh-huh. um, it doesn't even sound English anymore, but Germans uh-huh. keep talking about Hindi. Hen- yeah, hen- <laughs> <laughs> and you cannot say this. I have the word handy as an adjective, Okay. So I can say this is a very handy tool. But I, can I just borrow your handy to make a no. quick phone call home? No. I cannot say this. If you said that in Britain, I don't okay. think people would understand you. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I guess same in the U.S. I've only heard cell phone. They, yeah. they, they say cell phone. As or mobile. M- Americans would probably opt for cell phone, I believe, yeah. because it comes from the cells in which the uh, phone actually books itself into. I see. Yeah, well, we don't, uh, we don't really use that system much in the UK. It's a mobile or a mobile phone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. So that, this is another example of a false borrowing. And is there any truth about that? I've heard that the word handy, which sort of we invented in German, has spilt back into the English-speaking world. Not in my experience, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so no, no, you know, real cool people are saying handy now. Mm, not as far as I know. <laughs> okay. I got, I got one for you. Yeah. Do you know what a twin is? Well, I do because I live in Germany. Uh-huh. But before I came here, no. Right. So uh, I'll say it for all people listening. It's a person in their twenties. Right. So I think a 20-something would be what That's it is. That's it, yeah. Um, and you, also teens, haven't I heard that? Yeah, teens, same thing. But well, do you know where twin comes from? Probably, mm. at least that's what I think. It comes from a youth magazine, a you know, culture magazine in the 60s yes. that was called Twin. <laughs> right. you know, it was about counterculture and everything. Yeah. And they just called their magazine Twin, and the people who were supposed to read it were, of course, twins. Do, and was there a magazine called Teen? Not that I know of. That oh, that right. was for bra- that was Bravo. That's <laughs> <laughs> from the teen magazine. See, I have the word teen in my vocabulary, but I, uh, in the plural, I would say in my teens, I lived in Leeds. Okay, okay. So it does exist. There's another thing that word that that does exist in a way, but it changed meaning when it came into the German language, or we sort of used it and put another meaning on top of it. I think words changing their meaning, that's a whole other topic that we could perhaps deal with next time. I'd love to, actually. Good. So let's call it a day and uh, say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. You know what? What? I still don't get it. Maybe you will one day.